right now you know there are a couple of different ways to do vectors. First method that you know, knew how to do was graphical vectors. You got out your ruler, you got out your protractor, you applied a scale, you used your protractor, and you actually measured out every single angle. There is human error that is involved with that. The other method of vector resolution that you used was you used your trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. But the only problem with that was you had to have a right angle. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about law of sines and law of cosines. And really law of sines and cosines can be used to solve for any vector that has non-right angles or if I actually give you three or more vectors, uh, you can also use that. Now, I guess real quickly, talking about law of sines and law of cosines, what you're going to do is you're going to have these multiple angles. But if I go ahead and I just focus on that one right there, okay, what we're going to do with the law of sines and cosines is we're actually going to break that vector down into an x component and a y component. And what we're going to do is we're going to do that for that vector. We're going to do that for that vector. And we're going to do it for that vector right there. And when you go ahead and do that, you're going to get a series of x components. You're going to add them all together. You're going to get a series of y components, add them all together. And when we add them all together, you're going to get a single x value, a single y value. And then we can go ahead and use everything that we know because guess what? We just created a right triangle, and we can use what you guys are used to, the sine, cosine, tangent, and the Pythagorean theorem. So let me go ahead and get rid of this. I'm going to go ahead and put the steps for law of sines and law of cosines up there. Now, in all honesty, one of the things that I recommend, if you're comfortable with law of sines and cosines, don't worry about this step. But one thing I recommend is just give yourself kind of a little rough draft idea of what it's going to look like. And the reason why I say do a rough draft is because it'll let you know roughly if you're in quadrant one, two, three, and four. Because if you draw your picture and that rough draft shows you that you're in quadrant three, again, you're going to have to make sure that you have values that are between 180 and 270. Okay? Because again, the calculator only tells you quadrant one and quadrant four. And you'll have to either add or subtract 180 to get it into uh, quadrant two or quadrant three. Okay, I guess let's go ahead and first put up the rules. Okay, so steps for your law of sines and law of cosines. Okay, step number one solve for your horizontal component. Now again, when we were talking uh, the other day about horizontal and vertical components, remember your horizontal co component is going to be the cosine function. Cosine function equals x. Step number two, do the exact same thing, except now we're going to solve for our vertical component. Oops. Go ahead and fix my spelling. Vertical component. And again, this one, this one is your sine function. Okay? Sine is going to be equal to y. Once you have an x and a y, that x and y is going to give you a single horizontal component a single vertical component, and when you have an x and a y, no matter where they are at, okay, you're going to end up being able to draw a right triangle. So what I'm going to do now is say, solve your magnitude. Solve your magnitude using the Pythagorean theorem. And final step is to solve the angle. And again, as I told you before, make sure that you're knowing, is it in quadrant one? 
Is it in quadrant two? Is it in quadrant three? Or is it in quadrant four? The one thing again that I want to talk about these quadrants. Remember, in quadrant one, x and y are both positive values. And again, that's going to come back to your steps one and two. Quadrant two, x is negative, y is positive. Quadrant three, x and y are both negative. And over here in quadrant four, x is positive and y is negative. So again, it's going to be very important that you look to see in quadrant one, or sorry, in step one and step two, is this x value positive or negative? Is this y value positive or negative? And again, that's going to let you know what your exact angle has to be. I'm going to go ahead and come on down. This problem should look very familiar to you. This is the, one of the problems that you did for me on the quiz. Uh, the only thing now with this problem is, you know, again, that graphical method took way too long to do. You know, again, I saw some of you when you did that quiz maybe took a little bit longer uh, in doing this problem just because, again, you had to measure everything out. But what we're going to do now is we're going to actually look at uh, this. Okay, so let's look here. 78.9, I got one that's about 543. So I'm just going to, again, draw a sketch. Okay, so I'm going to say it comes down south. 243 at 56 degrees, so I'm going to do something like that. Uh, 32 degrees, uh, 21, uh, 543 at 136. Now I can see that I've got completely off here, so I'm going to go ahead and come back up just a little. Okay, So that one's probably coming something like that. And then finally, 218 degrees. Okay. So if this is kind of a rough sketch or rough draft of what mine looks, and I started right in here, if I were guessing, I'm coming somewhere up here into that second quadrant. And again, I'm, if I kind of drew this, I know, again, these are probably off by just a little bit. But I should, you know, I can say that I'm probably going to be on this half over here. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to drop far enough where I'm actually coming down here, but I'm, I'm going to give you an idea that I'm probably going to be over here in quadrants two and three. Okay. So again, let's go ahead and come back here, and then let's go ahead and start working the problem. Okay. The first thing I told you you needed to do, the first thing is solve for your X component. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take 78.9 multiplied by the cosine. South, straight down, 270. Plus, 243 multiplied by the cosine of 56 degrees. Plus, 21 multiplied by cosine, 32 degrees plus 543 multiplied by the cosine of 136. And then my final vector here is going to be 165 multiplied by the cosine of 218. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually say, you know, again, all of this added up is going to be equal to my x. Well, I'm going to go ahead and actually go to my calculator going ahead and turning my calculator on. Okay, let's go ahead and plug this in. Um, first thing I better make sure is that am I in um, Y? Doesn't want to go there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and you just go ahead and watch the calculator. I'm just going to come over here to my computer and just type it in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug in 78.9 and again, it does not seem to want to work here. Let's do this. 70, well, hmm. Let me go ahead and close this off. Okay, close this window. And I'm actually going to go ahead and start it again. For some reason, technology doesn't always work the best for us. Okay, so again, let's look here. 
Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull out my calculator. Since this one doesn't seem to want to work for me, I'm not sure why. Um, let's, let me do this first. Let's see if I can do it this way. Still not. Okay, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and do it this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually plug in 78.9 multiplied by the cosine of 270 plus 243 multiplied by the cosine of 56 plus 21 multiplied by the cosine of 32 plus 543 multiplied by the cosine of 136 plus 165 multiplied by that cosine of 218. And when I run this through, I get an x value of 118.08 meters. Okay? Now, the second thing that I told you that you had to do, second step, is I said let's go ahead and now do this for y. Okay? And again, the y function, okay? The y component, we said that was sine. So what I recommend you do is, again, use your calculator. Okay? Use your calculator the way it's supposed to be used. Okay, going to switch colors here. We're going to now go sine. We're going to go sine of that angle, sine of that angle, sine of that angle, and sine of that angle. Now, all I have to do on my calculator is hit second entry. And it comes back up with what I just had in there with cosine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that cosine. Everywhere there's a cosine, I'm going to change it to sine. And when I do that, okay, sine there, sine there, and finally... Sign. Oops. Got one more sign. There's a sign. And I get sign. And actually, I know that I have one error in there. Because I noticed that I did not use a parenthesis. I did not have a closed parenthesis. So I do know that we have an error in there. Okay. Let me go back to my cosine again. Cosine. Because I did not have, like I said, a uh, parentheses closed off. And again, I think I'm going to have messed up my uh, sign also because I just found another one. Cosine. Okay. That's why it's always good to double check all of your numbers. Okay, so I got a closed 270, I got a closed 56, a closed 32, a closed 136, and a closed 218. Actually, X, X ends up being equal to negative 366.93 meters. Let me double check the Y real quick, because like I said, I'm pretty sure that I, again, did not have one that was closed off. And again, I did have that because I did not. There we go. Did not have a closed off parentheses. So this one is 409.30. Okay, this looks a lot better. So what that's saying is, I did step one, negative 367 ish. Why? I got a positive 409. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of quickly look at what this looks like. So again, I'm going to be coming, x is coming this way, negative 366. y is coming this way, positive 409. So if I look at this, you can see that I have a second quadrant angle. This is going to be negative 366.93. This is going to be 409.30. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm finding this angle here. 
but I need to find my resultant, okay? I need to find my hypotenuse. And that's where step three comes in. Step three, Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So again, we're going to take this 409.3. We're going to square it. We're going to add that to negative 366.93. Squared. We're going to take the square root of that, and that's going to equal C, or that's going to equal your hypotenuse. Again, I'm not even going to trust the calculator. 409.3 squared plus negative 366.93 squared. Okay, just letting you know this right here gives me about 302,164.11. I need to go ahead and square root that. When I go ahead and square root that answer, I get a value of 549.69 meters. Okay. Now, we need to find this angle down here. Okay. Again, you actually have two legs and a hypotenuse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tangent of theta. Tangent, my opposite side, 409.3, divided by negative 366.93. And when I take 409.3, divided by negative 366.93, calculator spits out that the tangent of theta is equal to negative 1.11547. I'm going to use that inverse tangent function, inverse tangent, and it tells me that my theta should be equal to negative 48.12 degrees. But negative 48.12 degrees, that's quadrant 4. Okay? And we looked over here and we said negative x and positive y, that up here got us going into the second quadrant. So knowing that this is second quadrant, or this whole thing up here is second quadrant, I'm going to add 180 degrees to it. And when I add 180 degrees to it, I get 131.88 degrees. So, your final answer. Your resultant is going to be equal to 549.69 meters at 131.88 degrees. Thank you.